Ever see a big bird of prey flying overhead? It's got brown wings, a pretty longish tail, and you just know it's something cool. Maybe it's a hawk, or an eagle, or maybe even just a really ambitious crow. You squint through your binoculars and flip through your field guider, maybe even open up Merlin, but nothing feels certain. Because after all, there are 30 plus raptors in the US and Canada. Dark morphs, light morphs, juveniles that look nothing like adults. It can get really overwhelming fast. If that's you, then this is the video you need because I'm about to take the confusion out of Raptor ID and walk you through step-by-step step how to identify every Raptor in the US and Canada. Besides doing a deep dive and going bird by bird through every Raptor in the United States and Canada, here's what else we'll be covering. What makes a bird a Raptor? Five things to look for every time you see a Raptor, tools to help you identify Raptors, and a quick overview of Raptor families. By the end of this video, you'll know how to spot a red-tailed hawk from a rough-legged hawk, a peregrine falcon from a merlin, and how to never confuse an osprey with a bald eagle again. I'm Caleb, this is Better Birders, and we're about to level up your raptor game big time. What makes a raptor? Let's start with the basics. What even makes a bird of prey? Raptors are birds that hunt other animals for food. Raptors have sharp talons, hooked beaks, and incredible eyesight. This means crows are not birds of prey as they do not have a hooked beak, and also they are all black, and no raptors in the United States are completely black. The families of raptors I'll be covering in this video are hawks, eagles, falcons, kites, and vultures. Five things to look for in every raptor. Shape and size. Is the bird bulky like a red-tailed hawk or sleek like a peregrine falcon? You'll also want to look at wing shape, whether it's a broad wing or thin and pointed like a falcon, and also the shape of the tail. There can be a lot of good clues in a raptor's tail, so you want to notice if it's fan-shaped or long and narrow. The length of the tail can be very helpful when separating raptors from other raptors. Another big thing you want to pay attention to is flight style. A lot of raptors have their own unique flight style, and so you can really identify a lot of raptors just by flight style. You'll also want to pay some attention to markings and color on the bird. While color is not the best way to go, it can be a nice supporting field mark, especially if you get a good look at the bird. A big thing to pay attention to is lighting. Lighting can influence a raptor's color quite a bit, so you just want to be careful with that and make sure that you're not jumping to any conclusions too quickly. You also want to pay attention to time and location. You can pull up a bar chart on eBird to figure out what raptors are expected in your area. Good examples like the broad-winged hawk is not found here in the winter at all. They migrate south to Central and South America in the winter. So now for a quick overview of raptor families. Hawks are often broad-winged and strong flyers. Falcons have pointed wings and are very fast and agile. Eagles are huge, powerful, and often seen soaring. Vultures are scavengers and have a distinct teetering flight, especially turkey vultures. There is only two vultures in the United States and Canada, the turkey and the black vulture. It's not a very big family. And then there's also kites. Kites are kind of like small falcons, they're generally small, definitely none of them are, will be bigger than a red-tailed hawk, and a lot of them migrate south for the winter. Before I move on to tools that can help you identify raptors, if you're finding this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button, as it helps other raptor lovers like you find this video, and again, I really appreciate it, so thank you very much. The first tool is to use Merlin Bird ID. You can snap a picture or answer a few quick questions, and it'll give you some likely matches. I find Merlin very helpful for looking at range maps or just getting looking at pictures of a bird to see if they match. Binoculars or a spotting scope is definitely going to be essential for raptor watching as well, especially if you don't have a camera, because you can zoom in and get a better look at raptors. While you can identify raptors without them, they are very helpful for getting closer because raptors aren't always close to you. And then a field guide like the Sibley or Peterson field guide can be really helpful too to flip through and just kind of memorize what raptors look like. And so now we're going to dive deep into each of the 34 raptors found in the United States and Canada. We'll cover field marks and just a lot of different ways to identify them and separate them from similar species in the wild. So in this next section, I'm just going to go step by step through all 34 birds of prey or raptors found in the United States and Canada. Basically, just think of this as like your complete guide to identifying every single one. We'll cover field marks, behavior clues, which can be super helpful for separating them from other raptors, as well as some individual tips on how to find these guys. So the first one is the golden eagle, a very common eagle across the entire world, but more of a western species in the United States. They soar on air thermals with wings in a slight dihedral or like V shape, and occasionally flap and then glide. But we've got an overall just like a brown eagle, and then they've got some feathers on their legs, which the 
bald eagle, which is really the only confusion species, does not have any feathers on its legs. So that's a good way to separate them. Not a whole lot of white on them. Occasionally, they have some white on the underside. But if we were looking at the bald eagle right here, which is their only main confusion species, you'll notice that there is a lot of white on the bald eagle versus the golden eagle. It's mostly a golden color. Next one is the bald eagle. Pretty distinctive bird. We got a white head, white tail, and then these bright yellow feet, which do not have any feathers on them. As far as just like overall shape and flight style, they tend to hold their wings pretty flat. And then since they are big birds, they prefer to glide most of the time. Next one is the osprey. And these birds can share the same habitat, so they could be confused to separate the bald eagle from the osprey. The osprey has like this M shape in its wings, while the bald eagle has straight wings. Now, if we look at some field marks for the osprey, they've got this white belly, some white shoulders, and then white on the head. And then they also have this brown stripe by the eye, which can be helpful for separating them. Got this black hooked beak, and then their legs are feathered. Next one is the northern harrier, and this one right here is a male. This is a female, so as you can see, quite a bit of difference. The male is more of a gray color with white, and then they've got these black wing tips, which can be quite distinctive. And then the female is more of a brown color. Got some white around here, and then some black on the wing tips. But the best way to separate them from other hawks is by this white on their rump right here. Both of them have it, and it is quite distinctive, especially when they're flying away from you. It's pretty easy to see. The Northern Harrier flies pretty low and generally slow compared for, to other hawks. It likes to hunt near marshes and stuff in search of prey. And so they typically fly like this with a V shape. And then another way to separate them from other hawks is they've got like these facial discs right here. But depending on how close you are, you may not be able to see those. Next one is the sharp shinned hawk, a very small hawk. You may not be able to tell in these pictures, but it is pretty small. The only real confusion species is the Cooper's hawk. They look pretty similar. The sharp shinned hawk is really just like a smaller version of the Cooper's hawk. So everything's going to look smaller on the sharp shinned hawk, but a good way to separate them is to look at their head. So on the sharp shinned hawk, you can kind of see like in comparison to the wing line right here, their head doesn't really jut out that much. On the Cooper's Hawk, it sticks out a lot more. And so that's the best way to separate them. Size is actually fairly difficult to tell, especially since the males can be smaller than the females. And so there's a little bit of overlap there. Since the sharp shinned hawk is a smaller bird, it can flap a lot more. Generally with raptors, the bigger ones will glide more, and then the smaller ones will flap more. So if we go over here to the Cooper's Hawk, and we've got a bird with a long tail and then like some red bar under here. I already mentioned how to separate it from the sharp shinned hawk. Another good way to separate them from the sharp shinned hawk is to look at their head. So on the Cooper's hawk, the black on its head is more of like a block. It's like there's this line right here. And if we go over to the sharp shinned hawk, there really isn't that well of a defined line. It just kind of blends together. Next one is a pretty large forest hawk, and that is the northern gosh hawk. They fly with short flaps and glides. And then since they are a forest hawk, they will fly through the forest. A pretty distinctive bird. We've got an all gray hawk with like some stripes and then a brownish grayish back yellow legs and then this white eyebrow sh eyebrow stripe right here is helpful for separating them pretty rare generally so not likely to be confused with other birds the juveniles can sometimes get confused with cooper's hawks but the northern gosh hawk is going to be larger than a cooper's hawk next one is the common black hawk generally this bird will be found near water and they like to nest in cottonwood trees but we've got a all black hawk with white on its tail. And then they, when they fly, they have like paddle shaped wings, which can be helpful for separating them from the zone tailed hawk, which is its only real confusing species. So just look at the thicker and wider wings when comparing to the zone tailed hawk. Next one is the Harris's hawk. An interesting thing about this hawk is they are very social and will often hunt in pretty small groups, anywhere from like five to 10 birds. A South Texas specialty, at least only in the U.S., that's the only place you can find them. We got an all brown hawk, red shoulders, red legs, and then a lot of white on the tail, which can be helpful for separating them. If we look right here, you can see there's some white there, and then a white band on the edge. Next one is the gray hawk, and like its name would suggest, it is all gray. More of a southern bird, not going to be found throughout the entire United States. More of like a so southern specialty hawk here. All gray. It does have a fairly long tail, but to separate it from other hawks, just look at all that gray color, gray barring. And that should be pretty good. Next one is the zone tailed hawk. It can be very easy to confuse them for a turkey vulture, but if we look closer, we can see that they've got some white on the tail. Turkey vultures do not have any white, they're all black, and then they've got red on their head. 
the zone-tailed hawk has a feathered head, and then it's got some gray and white barring over here. And then like the turkey vulture, it's got like some fingertips with its feathers. Next one is the red-shouldered hawk, a pretty common bird. Got red on its shoulders, of course, and then some like white and black barring here. Here's a better look at these shoulders. So that's really a good way to separate them. Look for that red shoulder. And then they are smaller than the red-tailed hawk, but then larger than the cooper's hawk, which can be a good way to separate them. Let's move on to the broad-winged hawk. Again, it's got like these red shoulders like the sharp-shinned hawk, well, like the red-shouldered hawk, but its barring is a lot less noticeable when compared to the red-shouldered hawk. The tail of the broad-winged hawk has one white stripe and one black stripe. And then there's multiple black and white stripes on the red-shouldered hawk. Fun fact about this hawk is they will often soar in large groups called kettles during migration, sometimes numbering up into the thousands. Next one is the short-tailed hawk, specialty bird only found in Florida, at least in the United States and Canada. We've got a lot of white on the shoulders and belly here, black cap, and then some stripes on the tail. Not really anything that you're going to be confusing it with in its range cooper's hawk is probably cooper's hawk and red shouldered hawk is probably the only other hawks in its range that you could potentially confuse it with just look for all of that white on the belly and then wings this one is the swainton's hawk pretty large western hawk about the size of a red-tailed hawk doesn't really have any unique flight behavior to separate it from other birds just look at all the white underneath the wing and then Unlike the red-tailed hawk, it does not have any red on its tail. Next, we've got the white-tailed hawk. It does have a lot of white on its tail, as its, as its name would suggest. We've got a gray cap and then a lot of white underneath. Another South Texas specialty, so you're not going to run into this guy everywhere. Next one is probably the most common hawk in all of North America, and that is the red-tailed hawk. It does have red on its tail, as you can see right here, in flight. That can be more noticeable. Um, we've got a bird that has quite a bit of variation with color so just take a look at those pretty broad wings fairly long too the ferriganus hawk just right here has longer wings and that's a good way to separate them from that confusion species and then the swainson's hawk has a lot of white underneath which the red shouldered hawk in its shoulder area it is mostly red also the red-tailed hawk is the only hawk to have a bright red tail next one is the ferriganus hawk no unique flight style here its wings are just very very long it's quite noticeable especially when comparing them to a red-tailed hawk a little bit larger than the red-tailed hawk too and then kind of this rusty red color all over the back next one is the rough-legged hawk it gets its name from having feathers on its legs a pretty small hawk and for most of the country is only found in the winter but when flying it can be quite distinctive because it is a little bit smaller and then it does not have any red on its tail like the red-tailed hawk and also has these black wrist patches, so make sure you're looking for those. Next one is the Crested Caracara. I believe it is only found in Texas and Florida, but nonetheless a very distinctive bird. We've got like these white on the fingertips, all black. It's kind of weirdly proportioned. Got a really long tail and then a pretty big head. Here's a picture of one standing. So a lot of white on the throat and then the black cap. Next one is the Apalomato Falcon. Currently, they're only found in far south Texas. They're being reintroduced to their original range, but a pretty distinctive bird. We've got white on the chest, black back, and then some red mixed in, and then these bright yellow legs and bright yellow bill. Pretty limited range, so you're not just going to run into these guys everywhere, and there really isn't a whole lot of confusion species. The Prairie Falcon and Peregrine Falcon could get mixed up. Here's Peregrine Falcon right here. The Peregrine Falcon's going to be a lot bigger and then just powerfully built black head and then a lot of white underneath with some black and gray barring next one is the merlin this is a tiny falcon really neat to see they're super fast got a slate gray back and then some stripes and stuff on the belly the main confusion species is probably going to be the american kestrel right here kestrels have a bunch of orange on them and then merlins have no orange on them so next one is the american kestrel the last couple hawks we really haven't had a whole lot of unique behavior, but the kestrel has some really unique behavior. It will hover when hunting and then dive down for prey. No other falcon really hovers like the kestrel does. They flap really fast and just stay in the same spot, so it's pretty neat to watch. A very common falcon, probably the most common falcon, maybe second to the peregrine falcon. We've got an orange back and then some slate gray on the head and sides and then like white belly with spotting. 
And then they've got a lot of white on the tail with this black band. Next one is the Prairie Falcon. Could be very easily confused with the more common Peregrine Falcon. Prairie Falcons are lighter, whiter, and beneath their wing here, they have brown, while on the Peregrine Falcon, it is just clean, gray, and white barring. Also, the Par Prairie Falcon has a thinner mustache stripe right here, while it is thicker on the Peregrine Falcon. Speaking of the Peregrine Falcon, it is the most common falcon in the world and is well known for being extremely fast, especially on its dives. It can reach up to 200 miles an hour when hunting for prey. Like I said, the most common falcon, we've got a black cap and kind of like a helmet, orange bill, and then like a clean gray and white barring on the belly with some white on the chest. Next one is the gyro falcon, very rare falcon and also very large. Powerfully built, it's mostly white, very light, and doesn't really come south that often. It's more of like a tundra species, so pretty unlikely that you're going to find it, but it is a very neat bird. Next one is the California condor, the largest bird in North America, at least by wingspan. They soar on thermals in small groups, have a huge wingspan with very little flapping because they're so big, they just prefer to glide. Not very common, they're making a comeback. But we've got a black bird with some white on the wings. The best way to separate them from other species is just by size because they are huge birds. They make turkey vultures look small. So next one is the turkey vulture. We've got an all black bird, red on the head. Very distinctive, very common. The zone-tailed hawk in the west is really the only one that it could be confused with. But again, zone-tailed hawks have feathers on their head, turkey vultures are bald. Another distinctive thing about turkey vultures is they soar in a V-shape with their wings, and then they kind of teeter back and forth. Next vulture is the black vulture. Like its name would suggest, it is all black, black head, black body. It's smaller than the turkey vulture, and when it soars, it holds its wings in more of like a broad shape. It doesn't really have much of a V. It does rock a little bit, but not as much as a turkey vulture. And then also, if you're looking up at them, you'll see that they have silver wingtips, which can be quite distinctive. So if we move on to kites, we've got the white-tailed kite. A pretty distinctive bird, especially across its range. There really isn't any other kites, I don't think, in its range. Maybe the Mississippi kite could overlap a bit during migration. But we've got a white kite, red eye, and then black shoulder patch. Pretty distinctive. It's really just all white underneath. Found in the southwest United States. Could get confused with the Mississippi kite right here. And we've got a red eye, and then an all gray back does not have a black shoulder patch like the white tailed kite. Generally, an all white bird. This is a juvenile right here. It's more of a gray color. And then, as far as behavior goes, it's really just standard kite flight just short, buoyant wing beats and glides. Next kite is a very distinctive one the swallow tailed kite. Has its distinctive swallow tail, white on the belly and wings, and then otherwise, it's all black. Even when perched, you can still see their swallow tail. More of a southern bird. I don't know exactly how far up their range goes, but generally this bird is found in Florida and maybe a little bit farther north. Next kite is the hook-billed kite. It's got this distinctive hook bill. Only found in far southern Texas in just a few spots, but it is a very neat bird. Pretty distinctive too. It's got like these paddle-shaped wings, which can separate it from really any other raptor in south Texas. And the next kite is the snail kite. Found only in Florida, at least right now. Apple snails are moving north, so they might follow them like the limpkin has, but currently they are not. Slate gray bird, yellow beak, yellow feet, and then like the northern harrier, it has this white rump patch, but unlike the northern harrier, it has very broad white wings. And so I put together a video to try and help you identify every single bird that we just covered. You're going to see a picture of a bird and then get eight seconds to guess what raptor it is. It can be a lot of fun and a great way to test what you just learned. So go ahead and check that out. I'll see you there.